It's Umsum time. How much water should you drink per day? Hmm. Sixty-eight point two seven three five six four nine eight one liters. Now, <laughs> up to sixty percent of the human adult body is water, but every day we lose some of this water through sweat, urine, etc. So we need to replenish it. Now, there's a popular eight by eight rule which says every day one should drink eight glasses, each containing eight ounces of water. Whereas the Institute of Medicine suggests that the total water intake, including all beverages and food, should be 2.7 liters for women and 3.7 liters for men. However, no single formula fits everyone, but our amazing body itself tells us when we need water. For example, dark yellow urine is usually a very good sign of dehydration. Exercise, climate, and conditions like diarrhea, vomiting, etc., can lead to additional water loss. So our body makes us feel more thirsty. This brings us to the conclusion that the water needs vary from person to person and situation to situation. <laughs> Why is it hard to cure HIV uh -huh. AIDS? <laughs> HIV or human immunodeficiency virus infects the cells of immune system causing them to produce more copies of the virus and then eventually die. When too many immune cells of your body die and our immune system is unable to fight off diseases, then we are said to have AIDS or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Now, coming back to the question, it is hard to cure HIV or AIDS because mm. HIV has the ability to mutate extremely quickly. Hence, a drug which is somewhat effective on a patient suffering from HIV or ah. AIDS might not work on another patient because of the mutated HIV. Now, there are certain antiretroviral drugs that prevent the cells from producing new copies of HIV, thus controlling the HIV levels in our body. But it is hard to completely eradicate HIV because the virus integrates its DNA into our cell's DNA. Hence, if we stop taking the drugs, the DNA of the virus can again cause the cell to produce copies of the virus and thus, we are unable to control the level of HIV infected cells in our body. Why do we love chocolates? Mm. Chocolate is one of the most craved foods in the world. It just melts in our mouth and tastes so good that many of us are ready to eat them at any given time. Now, one of the reasons why we love chocolates is because they contain a substance called anandamide. In Sanskrit, ananda means bliss. Now, when we eat chocolates, anandamide present in them binds to special receptors in the brain, giving us bliss and joy, thus making us love chocolates. Some chocolates also contain substances like theobromine, it is thought that this theobromine makes our brain produce anandamide by itself, making sure that we feel blissful after eating chocolates. Mm. In addition to this, most types of chocolates contain sugar to make them taste sweet. Sugar activates the reward system in the brain due to which neurotransmitters like dopamine are released. Dopamine gives us pleasure and makes us feel good. As it makes us feel good, we tend to eat more chocolates to get the same feeling, and thus, we get addicted to chocolates. Mm. Moreover, whether it is milk chocolate, white chocolate, or dark chocolate, there are numerous varieties to choose from. Mm. Also, there are dry fruits like raisins, almonds, cashew nuts, etc., which we generally like. Mm. When these dry fruits are added to chocolates, the desire to eat chocolates increases. Also, according to a study, it is observed that salt suppresses bitterness and increases sweetness. Mm. Hence, while preparing desserts like chocolate cakes, cookies, brownies, etc., a little salt is added to them, making the desserts more inviting and tempting. <sighs> Thus, we easily get attracted towards them. Mm. How do we know that our stomach is full? 
Usually, our stomach and brain are constantly communicating with each other with the help of hormones and nerves. So, when our stomach is empty and the glucose level in our blood is low, the stomach produces a hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin generally travels to the brain through blood and informs the brain that we need to eat and thus we feel hungry. Now, when we eat food to satisfy our hunger, the food enters our stomach, causing its walls to stretch and expand. When this happens, the nerves on the stomach walls detect the expansion and tell the brain that our stomach is full and our hunger is satisfied. However, our stomach also expands when we drink a lot of water, but in this case, our hunger is not satisfied. Do you know why? This is because there is one more method by which our brain can identify whether we are eating food or just drinking water. Can you guess what that method is? Alright, I'll tell you. As mentioned earlier, our stomach and brain constantly communicate with each other with the help of hormones. One of these hormones is cholecystokinin. When we begin to eat, nutrients in food stimulate the release of cholecystokinin, which eventually enters the bloodstream. It is the presence of this cholecystokinin in the blood which informs the brain that we are eating food and not just drinking water. Now, as we eat more food, more cholecystokinin is released, informing our brain that our stomach is getting full with food and thus, the brain needs to suppress the desire to eat. Last but not least, did you know that boiled potatoes are the most ah. hunger satisfying foods? So next time if you are hungry, try them and find out the truth.